And then the doctor, actually my surgeon, she came in the room and she was like, can I see your pee pee? Because I need to know if we need to take, if we can take skin, if your pee pee isn't big enough. Hi guys, so I, I can't believe I'm filming. So as you guys know, I got the surgery and it's so crazy. I can't believe it. Um, I just want to start off by saying it, it has not been easy at all. Like literally at all. Like no. I was um, doing research. I did all the research I could have done. I watched all the videos about SRS and I would never have thought it would have been this difficult. But I did have a lot of complications. So let's just get into it because your girl had a lot of complications. My surgery was on November 2nd and it was with Dr. Belanger. If you guys don't know who that is, she's really good. She, I know a couple of girls that she did and their pussy looks cute, let me tell you. You basically have to get there and I live in where I live now. I'm not gonna say my address, but I have to go to Montreal, which is a couple hours of car by car I was really really stressed so what they do is they give you a hotel to stay so that in the morning you're right you're right where the hospital is so I stayed at the hotel with my mom which she came with me I know I talked about this before my mom is not a hundred percent um with what I'm doing but she decided to come with me and I was very happy that she did so she was with me and then you have to like douche your you know intestines so that you, you don't have to poop when you're in like the first days after recovery I mean in recovery so I had to like stick this thing up my butt and then squeeze it and then I would have to like go to the bathroom and like take all of that is inside of me out <laughs> um yeah, that was really weird, and I thought it was weird, but it got even weirder. So in the morning, I was feeling very, 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 very anxious, like so anxious. I thought I was going to have a panic attack, but I was just like, you need to do this. This is not a choice. Um, it's not a choice for it for you to get it because you can't have this anymore. Um, so I was really stressed out, so I just woke up. I got ready, I had to take a shower and be very, very clean. And then we went downstairs and there was a taxi coming to get me. And they actually paid for it. They paid for the hotel and everything. So everything was taken care of. I had my suitcase, which there wasn't a lot of stuff in it, which I wish, um, I wish I brought more stuff. So like, they sent me an email saying like a couple weeks before saying what you have to bring. And if I go look back at it, it's really easy to miss stuff because it's like, it's not really well organized. And I did talk to it about um, the, I did talk to it to the nurses over there. So they said they would look at it and I just said it wasn't very clear because I didn't bring all of my stuff that I should have. Um, so I wasn't really prepared like 100%, but yeah. I said goodbye to my mother and then I went in the taxi. The taxi driver was so cute. I didn't know, um, not cute, like cute, but like he was really nice. He was an old man and he was actually really nice and sweet. And I think he knew that I was going to get this big operation. So he was very sweet. And he dropped me off in the front of the hospital, um, took my suitcase with me and then actually um, like walked with me to the hospital. And I was like... You're a taxi driver, why are you doing this? But it's so sweet, you know. Um, yeah, that was so sweet. He was so cute. Like, I was like, oh, thank you. Because I was so stressed out. And I had no one because of COVID. So I was going to be alone this whole time. <sighs> so I go in the hospital. In this, like, it's like a hospital. It's, it's only for trans people. People think it's like a hospital where it's like all of kinds, different kinds of surgeries. But this one is only for trans people. Which made me, like, um, less stressed out about it, too, because, um, I feel like if it would, if, ow, if it was be, if it would be for other people as well, 
I would feel like left out. I go in, they take my temperature, you know, COVID stuff, and then they ask me a couple questions and they give me the sheet I have to um, fill out and sign. Um, basically, all that can go wrong, you have to sign that you're, you agree to this and whatever. I didn't read it because... It's just gonna stress me out even more. So I was like, I'm just gonna sign and not look, you know, because it's not a choice. So I fill out the paperwork. They bring me upstairs, and then this lady was like, um, f giving me more paperwork to fill. There was a lot of paperwork, and then she gave me these medications, and she asked me a couple questions, like, am I allergic to something? And then I said I was intolerant to dairy. So she gave me this little bracelet that said like intolerant to dairy, blah blah. I was so stressed at this point. I had my phone with me all the time and I was texting my friends that actually got the surgery and I was like, um, I think it's gonna happen in like 30 minutes and they were like, it's gonna be so fine. Um, it's not even that bad. Little did I know mine was gonna be the worst out of everyone I know. Like, I don't know one trans girl who had it worse than me. Like, I literally had every... Anyways... Um, so I fill out the paperwork, I take my meds, and then she's like, um, she took me to my room where I was going to be recovering. And it was really stressful um, because I was like, wow, in a couple hours I'm going to be there with a vagina, you know. So I was, I was like, okay, loves it because it was a two bed like room. So there was going to be someone else. And because of COVID, they had to like put curtains between us so we only could talk with our voice. We couldn't, like, see each other, you know? Um, so I was like, okay, cute. I was, like, mentally getting prepared for when I come back, you know? And she gave me this clothes, and she was like, change um, your clothes. And then I changed them. And then the doctor, actually my surgeon, she came in the room, and she was like, can I see your pee, -pee? Because I need to know if we need to take skin. I either heard something. Um... We need to know if we can take skin, if your PP isn't big enough. And I was like, okay. It was so weird. I know that, that she would have seen it either way, but I was still like, you know, awkward. It was awkward. I was like, here. Is it big enough? <laughs> is, it, is it bad enough? Is it bad enough? Yeah. She was like, if you don't have enough depth, can we use... A piece of your thigh and I was like no <laughs> like I I hope you have enough but I don't want to you know have like a piece of my thigh missing um yeah so she asked me that I was like no um just you know no um yeah and then she went away and then I was on my phone I called my friends I was like oh my god oh my god I'm so stressed like I hope everything is gonna be fine and they were like, yeah, it's not even that big of a deal. And so they actually helped me like relax in the beginning. But then after I was like, why is mine worse? You know, and that made me stress. Um, so this girl came and she was like, we are ready for you. Come with us. And I was looking cute. I had my little braids with like this um, cafeteria lady net on my hair. Wait, did I have a net? Oh, no, it was like a, a bonnet. Yeah, it was like a bonnet. And then um, I had my like hospital fit. And then, um, yeah, so I, I go in this hallway. And then as I'm walking in the hallway, I realize that we're literally in the hallway of like surgeries. And then I look in like the door and there's like, I look in the windows and I can see people getting operated. But I, can, I couldn't see, but I could see that like people were getting operated on like but I couldn't see anything you know what I mean um so then I realized I was like oh my god this is here that you know she's gonna get chopped off um so yeah and then I go they show me the room and then there's so many people it was so stressful it was so freaking stressful um yeah uh it was so stressful. So there were so many people um, getting stuff ready for me. And then the girl was like, sit on the, on the bed where I was going to get operated on. And then I sat and she was like, bend your back. And then she, they injected me with something to numb my like bottom half. Um, because actually they didn't put me to sleep. 
they gave me medicine that could like make me sleepy and then sleep but if I woke up it wasn't that big of a deal because um, it's all numb and like you can't feel shit you can lay down and then I lay down and then boop I went to sleep which was weird um, yeah and then I actually forgot what happened after like but I, I have tea I have tea um, so I woke up and they were carrying me into my room so I go um, they they go in my room and then the guys are like the nurses they're like one two three and then they put me on the bed with like the little thing and then um, yeah so I was in my bed and then this girl came and I was like half asleep half awake and she was like did you do you remember and I was like what and she was like you woke up during the surgery and I was like no way I was so high on drugs and I was like what literally oh my god I was like it was not processing and then she was like yeah you woke up and you were like are you done yet? And then I went back to sleep. She was like, you woke up. Do you remember? And then it actually came back to me later. But yeah, that was crazy. And it wasn't traumatizing. It was actually kind of funny. Um, because I couldn't really feel anything. And I couldn't see anything. Because there was this like, curtain hiding everything here. So when I woke up like this, I couldn't see. I could only see the curtain. So yeah. The... Day after, I would say, wasn't really that bad, but I made a friend, which was my um, roommate, which she had done the surgery, but she had the surgery with no depth, which basically, you don't have to dilate, um, I'll get to that in a second, um, but it's like, it's literally changing your pee-pee into a, a vagina, and there's no hole, like, you can only pee, you know, and there's a clit, but you can't fit something inside. It's weird. Um, so she had that. I don't know why. I didn't want to like ask her because I, I didn't want to like offend her. Actually, we ended up being friends, like really good friends. And then after you're in the hospital where they you recover for two days, they send you into like a kind of like big house. And that is where you um, are more independent. You change your eyes yourself. Um, you change your bandages yourself and... Yeah, I didn't really like that place only because, you know, I'm grateful they keep us really like kind of long. It's a week they keep us and in the US, I know they only keep you like two days, which isn't even believable. Like, I don't know what I, I would have done. So right now, I can't really sit properly yet and it's been two months, but um, I'm sitting on this donut right now. And it's like a donut cushion and it's really not comfortable. So, so yeah, so at that place, I had a lot of um, like stories happen to me and I'm going to do a lot of story time on that. So I'm not actually going to like tell them on this video because this video is going to be way too long. Um, yeah, it's already like 30 minutes long. Um, so over there, um, I kind of like had a shock because I watched a lot of videos where um, people would like explain what happened and no one really explained that your is gonna look disgusting like when they took off the bandages I don't know why I thought it was gonna look cute and like stitchy like stitches and like a cute little like swollen vagina bitch when I saw it, I fucking like started crying and it was too much. And like while I was at the house, I had so many things happen. Like I had a urinal leak, so my bandages that were stitched on to my vagina, um, they were soaked in pee all the time with the dry blood. So it smelled disgusting all the time. Um, yeah, it was disgusting. Um... It wasn't fun. Like, also my friends there, they had nothing of the sort. Like, the friends I made there that just had the surgery at the same time as me didn't have anything like me. Like, their surgeries went great. Mine had, like, all these complications already, and it was very frustrating. Um, yeah, it's actually getting to me right now because 
it's really frustrating like having something and then you see all the people that had it there it was so easy and you um you know you went through a lot worse like it was i don't know how to explain it but um like right now it's good it's just really really swollen and like my friends already they're not swollen anymore but it's fine <sighs> well, over there also the food was disgusting i'm sorry but the food was gross so um i literally spent all my money there because i was ordering food all the time and you can't really do anything except eating and walking outside, which I didn't do, which if you're watching and you're getting the surgery, I'm telling you, go, like, get up your bed and go take a walk. Because that literally made things worse for me. Because I, my body wasn't circulation, wait, what? My body wasn't circulating as much because I was laying in bed all day. And this needs to be like you know stimulated it needs to have blood flow you know so um because of that that i didn't walk a lot um i had a blood clot um actually two one was where my clit is which was perfectly fine they said it was actually good because it was protecting the clit um and the other one was where my p-tube was which is a catheter and because I had a blood clot there, they had to wait to remove it. Because if they removed it, the blood clot would like bleed and then it would um, block my pee hole so I couldn't pee. So that's why they had to leave my pee tube in for a more one more week. And when I was home, I had it again. It was the worst. I swear to you, when you go home, the week of dilation and everything is the worst. Yeah, so when they remove my mole, my like um, my like stacking on my I'm my my vagina, <laughs> my vagina. So when they remove the stacking on my vagina, I was shocked because first of all, I was not expecting my vagina to look this gross. Sorry. Um. Yeah, it was really really gross. Like right now, it's cute, I guess. Like, I was expecting it to look like this right now. After they removed um, the thing and I saw my vagina for the first time, she literally was like, okay, I'm going to remove the mold and then you're dilating. Like, all at once. And the other girls there, they had it removed the day before so they had time to, like, process and relax of what their vagina looks like, you know? I think, like, she should have done that to me because I was traumatized. And then I had to, like, stick a fucking 10-inch thing in my vagina. Um, was it fun? Um, yeah. But since there was packing inside me for so long and they had just removed it, dilation wasn't that hard because it was stretched. So it wasn't that hard. There was blood, but I couldn't feel anything. And then the next day, it got harder um, because it was tightening. And then, basically, that was my last day. And when I was dilating, I was thinking, and literally, I'm telling you, I didn't know how I was going to do it. Like, I was like, how? How? I was like, I cannot do this every day for three months. Like, I did not know how I was going to do it. And I had to. So, I was doing it. I had my catheter in, all the girls around me did it. Um, it was very painful when I was dilating because the P-tube is like right there. Um, yeah, so I went home with my catheter. The ride home was painful as fuck. And then when I came home, I started freaking out because my I actually forgot to, which is on me, it's my fault. But I forgot to get some stuff that I needed before the surgery. So my pa my family actually bought it while I was gone. And they had bought like the wrong stuff. Which I couldn't use. So I was freaking out. And then I live in the country, right? Like I live in the woods. I don't know if you can see like in the window. But I live in the woods, okay? And here we have well water. And it's like not 100% clean. So I cannot use it on this. So I couldn't take a shower, I couldn't take a bath, 
and I was freaking out. I, I also I had just thought of this when I got home. I was like, fuck, I live in the country. Like I was so stressed that I forgot about all of that. And then I was panicking, and then for a week, it was that. Like only panicking, only stressing, only um, worrying about uh, is it gonna, how is it gonna like end. It was bad. So I would say um, about uh, two weeks in, it was actually starting to get a little better, but I still have like um, suicidal thoughts. I did have some. I was, sometimes I was like, I, I wasn't seeing the light at the end of the tunnel, basically. So that was basically the surgery um, story and like what basically happened. Um, I'm gonna make more story times on um, the stories that happened to me while I was there. This was just to like explain to you guys what happened when I was there, like surgically, surgically. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna make another video, which I am actually almost two months post-op, and the reason I couldn't film like this is because I couldn't sit down for a while, and now I can, even though it's really uncomfortable. Um, so I'm gonna make a video of one month post-op and then I'm gonna make a video of two months post-op the difference and what happens and what to expect so I'm gonna do that um, so yeah don't forget to follow me on Instagram I love you guys so much and I'll see you next week bye